I couldn't believe it when the first version of Paper Animator got a thousand downloads in the first week of its release. Yeah! I was totally blown away. It sent me down this really fun path of creating more tools for DaVinci Resolve and even a version two that I'm really excited to show you today. But Paper Animator almost didn't get released at all. I had no experience making tools for DaVinci Resolve beyond watching other people create things. I knew the user experience that I wanted to create, which was I want to be able to drag and drop anything, even green screen clips, which I hadn't seen anybody do yet, and drag them into this tool that turns them into paper animations. So I got busy in Fusion, watching tutorials as I went, and I just focused on making one small thing work at a time. Into so one day I dragged a green screen clip into Paper Animator and it actually worked. So I was super pumped, but even though I'd accomplished the technical part of the user experience, the controls were pretty chaotic. And this is where I felt a lot of imposter syndrome. It didn't feel good enough to put out into the world. So I almost abandoned this project at this point and chalked it up to a learning experience. But I thought I'll put it out anyways, just to get some feedback while I figure out how to make the controls better. And amazingly, some people started using it, then more and more and more until it sort of took off, which I am so grateful for all of you. I'm sharing this story because I think what I've learned from this is that sometimes you just have to be that kid standing proudly beside the ugly painting saying, I made this thing. And not to be afraid to put things out into the world just because they're not perfect. So now we're here today where I'm really excited to give you a paper animator version two, a free and a pro version. And thankfully, I had a lot of help on this one. My good friend Asher Roland came to the rescue to give paper animator the glow up that I think it deserves. And I'm putting his YouTube below so you don't miss out on any of the absolutely insane things he's building for DaVinci Resolve. Let's get into the new Paper Animator version two, starting with what's new in the free version. It's now available as a generator. On the edit page, if you open your effects panel under generators, you can drag Paper Animator onto your timeline. We have this brand new interface. I love this so much. You guys have to tell me what you think about it. So with a paper animator open in the inspector, click and drag the media you want to add. If you only single click, the inspector window will change. So click and drag your clip right here. These are your master transform controls. Okay, and these are your clip controls. You can change your clip position, size, and angle without affecting the paper texture whereas the master transform will affect everything. And now our effect controls. First off, we have the screen controls. These controls help to clean up our green screen key. We'll oftentimes get a faint green outline and we can turn down the erode slider to bring our edge in and easily fix that. If we bring in a clip with a lot of green on it, we can use a screen gain and screen balance to fix that as well. Okay, so now that our footage is looking good, let's move on to the paper controls. This slider is our paper texture. You can make it more or less pronounced. You can also type in a value here if you wanna go beyond the preset value. And remember, you can also double click on these to reset them at any time. This is your paper edge thickness, pretty self-explanatory. This is the edge contrast and intensity and can be used to create this ripped paper look. This changes the scale of that look, so you can get more little rips, or if you scale it down, you can get a larger distortion along the whole edge. Now, if you've got everything dialed in, but you just want the paper to lie differently and to have the distortions of the paper in different positions, the random slider will help you easily customize that edge to find something that you like. The shadow controls are very straightforward. We've got strength, angle, shadow distance, and blur. All right, now let's look at the movement controls of the animation. This slider controls if you want it to wiggle around more or less. This slider makes your animation wander around the screen more or stay still. And when these are both set to zero, there's no movement. All right, now let's take a look at Paper Animator Pro. And right away, we can see this new transition control section. This is where you can select a transition type. If we click on flat, it adds this flat paper transition. We also have a crumpled transition and a paper airplane transition. My favorite. Now, here's the really cool part. We can adjust the transition size and angle and even mirror these transitions horizontally or vertically to get unlimited variations of these transitions, which is important if you're using Paper Animator several times throughout a video, you'll probably wanna have different looking transitions for each one. Something else we have in the pro version are these stop motion controls here in the effects section. This slider gives you more control over the frame repeat of the paper texture, and this slider gives you master frame repeat controls over the whole thing. So this is particularly useful when dealing with GIFs or green screen clips that have movement in them. As we turn down master frame repeat, we're gonna see more frames of the animation, whereas if we turn it up, it's gonna have a lot more of a stop motion effect. 
Now I'm going to show you how to save your own presets and load all the sound effects that come with Paper Animator Pro. We're going to use something called Power Bins. If you're unfamiliar with what Power Bins are, they're basically just bins that are available across every project that you open in DaVinci Resolve. So if you click on these three dots here, you can make sure that Power Bins are enabled. And now you should see your Power Bins. Left click and you can add a new bin. Let's name it Paper Animator. And now to create a preset, it's as easy as dragging the paper animator clip from your timeline into your power bin and naming it whatever you like. Super duper easy. Okay, let's do the same thing to add all the included paper sound effects. We'll create another bin and call this one sound effects. Now you can drag in the paper sound effects folder or free sound pack that came with your download directly into the power bins to keep the organized folder structure. Paper Animator Pro comes with this one of a kind paper sound effects collection and it's built with the sole purpose of making your paper animation come to life. In my opinion, it's night and day how much it adds to the overall effect to have high quality sounds. I'm really proud of this collection. I spent a lot of time recording and mixing these sounds to get them just right. And I think it's a secret sauce that will set your animations apart. So let's take a look. We have page turn sounds. These are recorded with a nice thick sketch pad paper. Sounds super crispy. Paper hits. These are so important for adding emphasis and impact to your paper animations. These are also great to layer with other sounds. Tiny bits of paper. These are delicate, tinier sounds. Again, great to layer in. Newspaper, page turns, crumples, rips. These have a totally different character, but add a lot of dimension to the sound. So if we look at the design sounds, these are pre-made combinations of usually five or more layers of sounds that are mixed and ready to be dragged onto your timeline. These combine the impact elements, page turns, crumples, and rips to make more dynamic sounds that should pair really well with your animations. And lastly, this favorites folder is just a place to save your favorites for next time. Again, we're all about efficiency. And I think that's about it. I can't wait to hear what you think about Paper Animator and Paper Animator Pro version 2. Again, special thanks to Asher for making this all possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.